Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Pretty exciting day. This is the first time I've had one of these guys in the lab. It's a Unity. It's a spectrum analyzer. So, it's a lot like an oscilloscope, but different, right? The oscilloscope normally works on time domain. Shows you, you know, the voltage changing with time, right? So, Yes, we do have the FFT, and in that GW, there's what they call a spectrum mode, but it's not really a true spectrum analyzer. Uh, but a spectrum analyzer, instead of showing, let's say, a one kilohertz signal like this, you know, sine wave or square wave, you know, in time as it moves along, uh, this one will show the spectrum. So if it's one kilohertz, you'll get a spike of one kilohertz. And if you get a spike at 10 kilohertz, you got a frequency there too. So if you're looking for noise and you see these spikes in different places, you can see where your noise is at what frequencies. If you have a, you know, say a one kilohertz sine wave, but there's some ringing on top, maybe it's a class D amplifier and you got 300, 400 kilohertz switching, you'll see one kilohertz, maybe your signal going through, and then you'll see that spike at 300 kilohertz. But you'll see other spikes, especially when they're square waves, because you'll see the harmonics from that, right? So, okay, let's open up this box. Now, so Unity did send this, you know, for me to evaluate. I didn't have to pay anything for it. So um, let's open it up. And we're gonna jump inside this thing. All right, guys, guess what I found inside this box? <laughs> Another box. All right, I gotta keep on working on this thing. All right, so opening this box, the first thing I found was a Unity smartphone thermal camera. Wow, that was totally unexpected. Uh, geez, maybe they're Wow, yeah, I don't know, that was interesting. I also found this box. Now, inside this box is a calibration certification. Nice. And USB and a power cable, all right? Now, I was already uh, told ahead of time that it did not come with probes, so I'm gonna use my own probes, okay? But, also came in this, I just want to show you the packaging. That's why I wasn't really worried about the dents in the box, but then this box, it was inside the dented box, is perfectly fine. So a box within a box packaging, I just wanted to show you that when they do ship these, they're shipped, you know, very safely. And also in plastic in case there's any moisture along the way, I guess. But yeah, so, okay, let me pull it out of here. All right, guys, this is really cool. Uh, spectrum analyzer. Now this thing goes up to 2.1 gigahertz, okay? Pretty wide band. So, now this bad boy has huge screen, touch screen. Here, let's just talk about it real quick, okay? Uh, I'm gonna power it up. It has a power button up here, which I don't have the power cord in. This is a soft power button. And the reason I know that, which soft is what I mean, is that power supply is running all the time and it's in hibernation mode when you hit it, it powers right up real quick. It's kind of the idea of, of having a soft button is that everything's kind of ready to go. Well, um, a hard one is this switch on the back next to the power input, okay? And the advantage of a hard one is that when you don't want, let's say you want to protect your equipment from EMP, no, just kidding. But you want to protect it from spikes and noise and stuff like that, or EMP. <laughs> you open up the switch. That way, the uh, whatever spikes coming in on your power line aren't bothering your equipment. So, you know, some equipment, you don't have that option, right? It's just a soft switch, like my Siglent oscilloscope back here. But with, um, with this guy, he has both. He has a hard switch back here, and the soft switch in front. So if you do want to shut down, you can reach over here and, and you know open it up so 
it's taken offline. It's protected. I plug everything into plug strips, and so I hit the power button on this plug sw switch so it disconnects all my equipment because I got too much stuff to worry about. <laughs> and if something fails, I don't want to worry about that. So I just do it that way. But it is really nice to have a hard switch, okay? In front, you have three USB ports. You have a uh, earphone. I'm going to explain why that's good later. It has a micro or a speaker output, so you can hear audio stuff. We'll we'll do that in videos to come. Uh, hey, by the way, put comments down below. This is just a box opening. I'm going to power this up in just a minute. I'm kind of teasing you a little bit, but I'm going to power it up. But um, put your comments below what you'd like me to measure. I'm going to do, one thing I'm, I want to do, there's a lot of stuff I want to do. You know, Unity sent this to me, and I want to take advantage of it. And I want to, I got a huge list, but I want to know what your list is. And there's a few things I really want to do. Otherwise, um, I'm going to do some of the things you guys suggest. This is a PFC converter. I want to look at the spectrum on this to see what that looks like, okay? And also I want to do... Um, I don't have one in reach right now, but I want to do one of my uh, what I call the low frequency switchers. The you know the rectifier with the big bulk capacitors like these and most audio amplifiers. I want to do one of those too. I want to look at the spectrum of those. And you know another thing I thought about doing is some fancy power cord versus a cheap power cord. Is look at the spectrum on that input to output. You know, just to see what it looks like. You know, there's just a lot of things I you can do with this. One of the really common things you would use something like, hey, you know what, let's just power it up here. First, before I do that, what I want to show you is besides the power input, you do have one of these little things, I forget what they call them, where you can lock it to a bench. I, I really never see them used except for in a school. But this thing right here, this uh, gray plastic, is four screws and take it off. And it has a really nice bended, uh, like a filtered screen there that you can take out clean. Because with something like this, you really want to take care of it. And I like that they do that, uh, that they give you the option to go in there taking it out and cleaning it. So that any accumulation of dust or whatever doesn't start prohibiting the proper airflow. So... Something like this you want to warm up for, say, 20 minutes or so to let it get nice and warm so you get good stable measurements. Any, like this LCR meter, anything really good, like the gain phase meter, the distortion meters, even your oscilloscopes, you should not let them warm up, okay? It has a nice handle with a rubberized grip on the bottom where you hold it. But it has these three BNCs. One of them is a 10 megahertz output, and that's so you can sync this guy with, or you can sync all, all your other instruments to this guy, so it has an output. It also has a 10 megahertz input, and you can sync, if you have other stuff on your bench, you can sync this to that, like say signal generators, things like that. So it's just a way, um, when you're using this kind of instrumentation, sometimes people like to do that, okay? Uh, you don't need to, but if you, if you know what that's for, then you might want to do it. Or the third one here is actually a trigger in. So if you know when you want to capture something, you want to sync it up to that, you can trigger this in. So to essentially any other clock other than 10 megahertz. 10 megahertz is just a common one. That's why they have the input and output on this, those two options. They also have an HDMI. And so if you have a big screen that you want to hook up to a monitor, you can do that. Even though the screen's big, you might want to uh, do that. And it has the uh, Ethernet, so you can hook it up to your Ethernet. We're going to see how you can use that, as well as the USB, okay? It has the USB back here, as well as the ones up in front. So let me go ahead and plug this in. You know what? By the way, on the, uh, you know, you can see the vents, all the, the fans are all the way across the back. Um, and it does come with a, a calibration, so it did come calibrated. And it has these nice uh, clip-out feet here with these big rubber things here. So just like your oscilloscope, so it doesn't slide back on your bench. So let me go ahead and plug it in. Okay. And I'll make sure that the, yep, power switch is on back there. With the power switch on back there, yeah, we're gonna see 
uh, kind of that uh, button's kind of red, so it's kind of lit up, so it's easy to see, and you know that you got power at the unit. And uh, okay, let's just turn it on. Okay, it turned green. I don't know if you can see that. I'm not sure how long this is going to take to start up. Uh, some of the well, it's not taking too long. Some of these spectrums take a little while because they do a lot of self checkings, and it's more sophisticated than your oscilloscope is. So it it has to settle and get the clocks right. Do a bunch of okay, it's loading some software, and actually that wasn't very long. I expected it to be a little longer. Anyway, uh, it's touch screen. Well, we're not going to mess around with this right now. I'm going to show you a picture here of what it looks like up close. This is just meant to be a quick box opening. I just wanted to show you this and get your input of what kind of tests you'd like to see. Uh, what kind of things. I would like to look at some of these uh, power generators like this EcoFlow. Like the, the um, AC output. You know, uh, Just see how clean that is. Uh, uh, compare that to what you get on your power line. This is a 50, um, 50 volts DC max input. So I'm gonna show you the connectors and all that. It's got these little rubber boots protecting them. And just to give you a tip, they're not BNCs. They look like kind of a gigantic BNC. They call this an end connector. I think that's what they call them. Yeah, this is a female end then, so I need to have the male end of the uh, Jack here, I got a cable here. So it takes these big old cables here. And so they're usually really high quality cables that you use with these things. So anyway, we're gonna look at some signals, but you can kind of see the spectrum. Two advantages of these versus using your FFT. Even though the GW Insect has the spectrum mode, this is an actual spectrum, which is the spectrum on that, um, it's still, essentially like an FFT operates is very similar except for the interface is more like a spectrum. So if you've used the FFT on some scopes, you know, sometimes you, you have to kind of play around with it to get the right bandwidth, the right frequencies and all this stuff, the resolution and all this stuff set up. The advantage of these things is they do have that really good horizontal, uh, you know, the frequency resolution. So if you want to look at frequencies real close to each other you can pinpoint them on on this okay one of the huge advantages is most oscilloscopes that you know we use even a lot of companies I work for are 8-bit oscilloscopes okay you have to spend typically let's just say on the average once you spend over 10,000 you know you're getting 15,000 20,000 oscilloscopes you're getting like 12, 14 bit oscilloscopes, okay? Now, there's some companies that have come out, like Roland Schwartz, I think, has a, a 10 bit scope that is, and actually, uh, well, anyway, I think it's like 3,000, 4,000 for that 10 bit from uh, Roland Schwartz. I think um, Rigo just came out with one, which they were going to send me, but they just haven't done it. So, yeah, I don't know, Rigo, what's going on? Uh, Anyway, they're going to send me one of their new scopes, and my channel's just not big enough. So, you know, they sent to Australia. Bigger channels. <laughs> anyway, uh, they have a new one that has high bit rate. O1 has a 14 bit that's, you know, under a thousand bucks. And anyway, I use the Pico scopes, which I really love the Pico scopes. I think they're some of the best scopes you can buy. Anyway, uh, I've got a 14-bit, you know, Pico scope, and it's down in the few thousand dollar range. So you can get scopes down in the lower price range, but I'm just saying in general, from the big companies, you're spending a lot of money to get above eight bits. Okay, these things uh, are have a really a wide vertical resolution. So I'll have to look at the specs to see how many bits it is. But I think it's going to be equivalent to like 16 bits or something. I'm not sure. But whenever you have a high bit rate, vertical resolution, so that you can look at microvolts kind of thing, um, the input is really low noise. So those analog uh, 
to digital converters, those A to D converters, they're trying to see a signal, and if the noise is too high, it's kind of like they caught the grass or the weeds. You can't see the no the signal through the weeds, you know. So you have to keep the low noise really low. So this thing, I think, goes down to 160 dB, something like that. That's super low. Um, so one of the uh, big reasons people get these things is so they can do pre-compliance EMI testing. They can, and I'm going to show you this. That's what we're going to do these power supplies in the next video. Is we're going to take. I'm going to show you some basic ways you can use this for like pre-compliance testing. Just sniffing, okay? Just you really kind of basic use of this. And you you might have taken an oscilloscope and taken a probe and kind of probed around like magnetics or switching devices and saw the noise on your scope and if you put an FFT you might have seen that this thing a spectrum analyzer an actual spectrum analyzer is very useful for doing that kind of stuff so that way you can try if you have a noisy circuit you can uh, you know take care of that problem before you spend all the money two three thousand dollars a day at an EMI lab that you send your gear off to and maybe you go with it to do the testing, right? You probably go with it. But when you're there testing, uh, you know, you're sitting there pulling your hair out, trying different things and all that, and it's a really bad time to try to fix things. You should always try to fix things before you go to a lab. When you go to a lab, you really should be expecting to pass. It's really amateurish to uh, send a thing there, fail, and then try to fix it. That shows your inexpert, you know, that shows you you don't really have the experience. Uh, and you're wasting money and time and cycles. Cause, yeah, so what you want to do is you want to use the spectrum. There's other ways to do it, but this is a great way to do it. And you can sniff out, do some pre-compliance for EMI. So we're going to look at that because this, this scope can definitely do that. By the way, um, I guess I could peel this off. Not positive if I should do that or not. It's a touch screen, by the way, if, if I haven't mentioned that yet. So you can see me move up and down this. Big screen, super nice. Not sure how good that comes across, but guys, I'm really super excited to have this in the lab. I mean, this is amazing. So, so many things we can do. It's kind of like you know, you've been doing all this testing with multimeters and you get your first oscilloscope and, and you're like, oh, thinking of all the cool stuff you can do. That's that's like this, you know. Having this in the lab is the same thing though. It's like, oh gosh, it's like, it's like getting your vision corrected. Maybe you've always had poor vision and all of a sudden your vision is correct and you can see the world. And now you can go experiment and, and adventure, you know. Um, the world's open and you're like, wow, <laughs> that's like this guy. Now all of a sudden we can see so much more. So, uh, I want your input. So again, two thumbs up to Unity. Thank you. It was kind of crazy. They actually, you know, I think I sent them a thing asking them like, Hey, I'd like to look at one of your spectrums. Can I borrow it? You know, can I do anything? And anyway, it, it took a little while for them to, finally reach out and all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, I had already kind of started looking at another way to do this for you. But then out of the blue, they came up and sent this to me. Crazy. So, really excited about it. Uh, thanks again, my patrons. Really appreciate you guys. Um, I've been buying some stuff for the channel and videos. Yeah, thanks for hanging out there with me, guys. It's been a rough year. And, you know, hopefully things are going to start coming together now. I'm going to do a couple videos kind of talking about it. Got a new job working for the defense industry again, military type stuff. So back in that business and I think I'm going to do a video about the last few years, my experience and what's happened. So uh, might be a couple of videos I need to do on that. A uh, couple couple different topics coming in a different direction. So let me know if you guys are interested in hearing about that. But uh, I think I'm kind of getting all that straightened out. Videos should be coming out again. And uh, yeah, so back on track again. Thanks for sticking there with me. And sorry I'm talking so much.
See you next time.